What is the difference between structured and unstructured data? Hi, I'm Bernard Ma, and in this video I want to look at the difference between structured and unstructured data. As someone that helps companies make better use of their data and find the right data sources to drive their performance, I very often find myself having to explain the difference. So let's look at this in very simple terms. Structured data basically gives, us, gives it in, away in the name. There's a structure to this data. And this is the data we have relied on throughout most of history when we think about data. Things like, I can count people and I can say how many people live in this country. And you can put them country, people, you can put them in rows and columns. I can look at financial data. So how many iPhones has Apple sold per quarter? And you put this again into a nice table like an Excel spreadsheet where you have rows and columns, or even something like a multi-dimensional database where you have lots of different fields, but you can still associate them with this. So you can look at maybe three, four dimensions. So by look at iPhone sales, by region, by time, by product type. So they're different dimensions, but they're all predefined fields. Unstructured data, on the other hand, is something I can't simply put into something like an Excel spreadsheet. Think about an email or the content of an Instagram message or a photograph or a video footage. So these are things that are very complex and I can't easily reduce them to a simple, to a, a small number of fields. Actually, 80 to 90% of all the data in the world is what we would re refer to as unstructured data. So there are those email messages, those social media posts and photographs. And in the past, we basically had no real way of analyzing this data. So we discarded this information and focused on the data we can easily count and put into fields. If you think about a survey, that's a good example. So let's think about an, uh, a customer satisfaction survey. What we tended to do is to do multiple choices because we have predefined fields. We can put them into a table and analyze them. Or I ask something like a, a net promoter score. So how likely are you to recommend us to a friend? It starts at one, goes to 10. There's those numbers I can then easily analyze. But actually, do I get the richest insights from this information? I get some interesting data, but actually, what I also want to ask is an open question. What do you particularly like about us as a company or our product? What do you think we could do better? And this is now giving us an, an open-ended question. So any, anyone replying to the survey can put in anything into this, this box and therefore it becomes unstructured data. And lots of companies shy away from this saying, actually, how do I analyze this data? Nowadays, there are tools available to do this for us. So in the past, we had to basically hand code this. So if, some, if you have 100 replies to your open-ended question, you then go through this and say, how many of them are talking about how it handles, how many of them are talking about the features, how many talk about the brand. Nowadays, you can use artificial intelligence and advanced analytics to do this analysis for you. So companies like Facebook are doing this where they analyze Facebook comments and posts. And their automated system un systems understand what you're talking about. They will understand the sentiment, even your mood, and all this can be automated. In the same way, companies like Google have made, made huge advances in image recognition technology. So they now have artificial intelligence algorithm that can, algorithms that can automatically detect what or who is on a photograph. So suddenly this, what we thought was data we couldn't really analyze in the past, now becomes really useful. And I would argue that the most insightful data is actually this unstructured data because we can get much more insights, we can understand so many more dimensions. 
and actually those lines between structured and unstructured data are a little bit blurred because I would argue that most data sets nowadays are what would I call semi-structured data. So they are unstructured data like a photograph but they still have components of structured data. So if I take, let's say I send an email and this email has 500 words in it. This is all unstructured, but the structured data is when was this email sent? Who was it sent to? Which company does this belong to? In the same way for photographs, if I take a photograph on a digital device, I now have this time stamped, device stamped, geo stamped, so it will then attach some metadata to it, saying this is the, lo the location, the time and device when this data was taken and where this data was taken and by what device. So actually most uh, data sets are now semi-structured. But it has implications of how we store and use this data too. So structured data we would usually store in what we call a relational database or even an Excel spreadsheet. But if we have more dimensions we would put this into a relational database. Whereas Unstructured data would usually sit in something like a data lake that hasn't got any structure. We should, so we basically store all our photographs in our iCloud library and then we use artificial intelligence to say I want to see all my photographs that contain this person, they contain a dog and then the AI, the artificial intelligence will analyze all of these photos and extract the important information. Hopefully this clarifies the difference between structured and unstructured data. If you want to learn more, head to my website at bernardsmar.com where you can find lots more articles on how companies get the data they need to really drive performance or browse my YouTube channel to find more videos on this topic.